Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're going to be going over the installation of four LED spotlights on my RV. These are a really, really great upgrade and one of my favorites that I put on while we were full-timing around. And uh, basically the great thing about LEDs is they don't use a ton of power and they're very, very bright. These particular lights are very, very inexpensive and they put out a ton of light for what I paid for them. I have a set of these on the roof rack of my Jeep that I've had for two years and I loved them so much I bought another set of four to go on top of the luggage rack of my RV. So I'm gonna show you how to install these. The thing I really love about this is the only real lights that I have on the outside of the RV are the headlights. And when you unroll the entire awning, it has a strip of LEDs, but you have to make sure you unroll your awning before those are really functional. So any bumps in the night or things I had to investigate or fix or do anything like that, um, you had to either undo the awning or use a flashlight and um, I really didn't like just stepping out into unknown situations when you hear, you know, something getting into the trash or you don't know if it's a bear or what. Um, I'd have to stick that flashlight out the door and look around. And uh, so now I can just hit a switch and the entire outside of the RV in 360 degrees is just lit up like Christmas. I can go gather wood, I can go investigate, I could work on something in the middle of the night if I needed to. Um, so I absolutely love this upgrade. It's pretty straightforward, very easy to do. You can definitely do this in a day. And the lights themselves are only like 20 or 30 bucks. So I'll put a link to those in Amazon if you decide to get the same kind. But without further ado, let's jump into the installation of these lights, which I'm absolutely loving on my RV. So let's jump out there and check it out. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna have to drill some holes. So you're gonna get a drill bit that's a little bit bigger than the bolt. You can start that on a round surface by using a screwdriver and a hammer and just making a dent for your drill bit to sit into. Then we're gonna drill that through and clean off any loose little barbs and stuff. Make sure our screw fits and we're going to attach our bracket. And then the light is attached with four little uh, bolts as well on the sides and you can adjust that, kind of swivel it forwards and backwards. And so we're going to go ahead and attach those as well. And you're probably going to want to wait until night before you really tighten these down so you can kind of adjust the lights exactly where you want them. And then you can tighten all those screws and bolts down and it's going to go ahead and hold it right in place exactly where you want it. Alternatively, you can assemble the light and the four screws ahead of time. Just make sure that you have the mounting bolt in place before you do that or else it won't go in. Now the wire I chose is kind of a 14-2 gauge jacketed wire. So it has an external uh, jacket on it as well, sleeve, that's going to be UV protected and everything else. And then inside it has two wires that are also insulated. And so that's gonna protect it from sun and all that good stuff and make sure that they're gonna be fine exposed to the elements. And LEDs don't use a ton of power, so this is gonna be more than enough um, wire for this job. And now what we're gonna do is basically just strip everything and we're gonna put that into place. Um, usually you'd wanna use some butt connectors and shrink wrap tubing to make sure these are nice and watertight, but out on the road I just, I ran out. So I'm gonna use uh, twist connectors here and then just tape everything together and probably come back to this and do this with butt connectors. Sometimes you just have to use what you have while you're out on the road. And so far it's been six months and it's still working great because I haven't gotten back to the butt connectors, but you can use whatever you wish to attach these wires. Now I used some wire ties to go ahead and secure this to the luggage rack and just work your way around and do all the lights. When you're done, you're gonna have something set up like this. I have four LED lights. This is after I wired everything in together so you can see they're turned on. But they're all just wire tied to my luggage rack all the way around and I have them pointed at four different spots in the RV and they work absolutely great. The wiring is run into the RV by going into the refrigerator vent. And so you pull this little panel off and that's gonna run right along the backside of the uh, refrigerator, just like this. And I have a lot of my stuff run this way. And it's gonna come down from that vent and then right behind the refrigerator and into another hole that I pre-drilled for my solar and other stuff, so that runs into there and onto our switch. Now when it comes to the switch itself, this is the entire kit that you get. And you have the Sasquatch, Sasquatch switch there. You have your ground, which also has a jumper to the ground on the light. And then you have the white, which is the power coming in and it has a jumper to the uh, positive on the light. And then you have a red wire that's coming out and that's gonna go to the relay that powers your lights. So as we move on down the road here, you can see uh, you have this, uh, they actually put a little grounding wire right here. So you're just gonna screw that to a ground uh, with their installation. And I'm gonna actually run a, a negative wire from there to the other negative wire by the um, relay, just so I only have two wires to connect. But for them, they use four. 
Uh, right here you can see that this is a red wire coming out, that's your power lead. And that needs to be hooked up to power along with the relay. So the relay needs power and the switch needs power and I'm gonna connect those together. So that again, I just have one negative wire and one positive wire to connect and it's gonna power everything. I think that's a little simpler in my opinion, but you can wire it however you wish. So from the relay, it goes on to the first set of LED lights and the second set of LED lights right there. So that's the way that's all rigged up and I'm gonna go ahead and add my wires just to simplify this a little bit. So now you can see on the wire itself, I actually took another black negative wire and spliced it in there and joined it with the negative wire on the relay. So I just have one thing to connect to a negative. And I did the same thing with the positive wire that came out there. I used a red wire, the same gauge, and connected that, spliced it right underneath the fuse. That's a little inline fuse right there. And now I just have to hook that up to power and it's gonna power the light on the switch and the relay, and we'll be totally good to go with just those two wires. And so now we can move on with the installation. Now with the switch, you're just gonna to wanna to decide where you wanna put this. And then you're gonna mark it with a pencil. You can use a measuring tape or rulers or levels or whatever you want. I just eyeballed mine. And now we're gonna drill four pilot holes for my little saw. And I'm going pretty fast and loose with this guy because I really thought there was a vanity plate like all the other switches there that was gonna help cover any little imperfections. And uh, after I had done all this, I, I realized there was no vanity plate. And so that's what the switch looks like and I just hated it. It was kind of rough around the edges and it looks really small and weird compared to the other toggle switches that have vanity plates. So what I did is I just used some gaffer tape to kind of make my own little vanity plate. It'll cover up some imperfections and uh, then I can just go ahead and put that switch in there. It makes it look a little bit better but you could also just get a vanity plate or get a switch that has a vanity plate that matches uh, you know, the awning switches and stuff. But for me, that's fine. I don't care. I'm not too picky. So here's the light and the switch, and it's lit up all the time the way it's wired. If this were placed up front, you could easily wire the uh, light on the switch to turn on with your headlights. So with your uh, parking lights or your instrument panel on, that light would come on, and when you turn your lights off, that would come off. Mine is always on, or alternatively, you could just pull off one of the jumper leads for the light, and it would always be off. I like to be able to see it at all times at night when I'm stumbling around if I hear a noise outside. So I like that mine is wired to stay on all the time and it doesn't draw a lot of power. So it comes down from the refrigerator and it goes to the switch and the relay and all that good stuff, which in turn goes up to the lights. And I have it all wired into this little, my little fuse area right here, my power outlet where my old battery used to go. So you can see the positive is hooked up to a fuse, blocks, a fuse box there and the negative is run up to my negative bus terminal located right there, and we are all good to go to enjoy these lights. Well, there you go, guys. Pretty simple up upgrade. I mean, other than the wiring, uh, the, the lights are super inexpensive. I can't believe you get that much light for that little cash. So I'm really loving these particular lights, and they've been working really well for me. I completely exposed to the elements of so snow, rain, sun, everything for two years, the ones on my Jeep roof rack. And uh, I just put the ones on the RV about seven months ago and they are working flawlessly. And they have also been exposed to all the elements and the wind and the rain and the snow and all that stuff. So they're holding up really, really well. Um, again, I'll put a link in the description down below for my Amazon affiliate link. You can get them there if you decide to get that particular type or you can just go there and browse around for different lights that you want. Um, and that's about it. The only thing that I will mention is these will attract bugs if you're in a really buggy area. Um, they put out a bright white light, which bugs are gonna like if you're down in a swampy area. And also they're so bright that you're probably not gonna wanna use these in RV parks. This is mainly for boondocking and stuff like that. And you cannot use these while you're driving down the freeway because you're gonna be blinding people. So with that being said, they're really, really great for boondocking and I've been absolutely loving them. And now if you wanna do the same thing, you can put these anywhere on the back so you can help see when you're backing up or on the front, you can put them on the bumper when you're off road on those little forest roads at night and you want some extra visibility. Just make sure you're not using them on a paved road and you're not gonna blind anybody that's coming this way because they are very, very bright. So with all that stuff said, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. Please like, share, subscribe if this video helped you out. That really helps me out. And uh, until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.